today to talk about Butterfield Colors Flat Out Countertop Mix. As you can see, some of the tools that will be needed in front of you uh, for doing a simple application of countertops. I have a four foot level here uh, for use in leveling out our casting table. A framing square and a simple T-square uh, for laying out your pattern. You have a speed square, a couple different types of snap knives. We have some clear facing material in several different sizes. Uh, we have a squeegee. We have some two-sided tape that will be used with the rail system. You have the rails for the forming system, which come three quarters of an inch, one inch, one and a half inch, two inch, and two and a half inch. The flat out polymer that's mixed with the flat out countertop mix, which is a self-consolidating glass fiber reinforced mix. In today's application, we're going to pour a couple of different countertops uh, using the materials here. We'll describe the materials a little bit as we go. The flat out polymer is used with the flat out countertop mix. You mix 3.25 quarts of flat out polymer with a bag of flat out countertop mix which yields approximately five square feet at one inch. The first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you have a sturdy level surface that can be used as your casting table. It must be smooth and it must have no blemishes in it. If you had a scored line from a knife, it'll actually shadow through into your countertop. So the first thing that we're going to do, the first step that we're going to do, we're actually going to clean our casting table. So this is a simple solution of uh, dish soap and water. We're going to use this to, to clean our casting table, which is extremely important. We want all the contaminants and debris removed prior to laying down the base material. We're going to use a simple squeegee to move around the material. This is just a preliminary clean, and we're going to be spraying some additional material on it in a little bit when we put down the base material. At this point, Jim's going to go ahead and check the level on the table. This particular piece is going to be a tabletop. And what we're going to do first is lay out our dimensions. As you can see, we now have a, a red layout of our tabletop. Uh, two things. First and foremost, you want to make sure your casting table, if you can have four-sided access, uh, you'll have much more success. Secondly is, we originally laid this out in pencil to make sure that we had our dimensions correct. And then what we did is we outlined it in red pen. It's not necessary to have the pencil down first and then the red marking. What you don't want to do is just use pencil. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're, I'm going to go ahead and pour the material in. And then what we're going to do with our hands is we're going to agitate the material to get rid of any air pockets that you may see. Again, this is a self-consolidating mix and you must get it into the mold within two to three minutes after mixing. Now a couple things to keynote. If we did not have a level pouring table, what would be happening is the countertop mix would be flowing all to one side. Secondly, we needed to get the second batch of material in immediately. We're going to go ahead and let this get a skim. 
What we're going to do now is, is put a piece of foam in it. This material has a tendency to heat up a little bit, so we'll put a piece of foam to help to keep the heat inside of it. Okay, so it's been about two and a half, three hours, and you can see the countertop's good and hard. We've, uh, we've removed a portion of the foam that we're going to set back in place, and the reason we're going to do this is there's several different ways, but we're going to use this piece of foam to protect not only the countertop, but our casting table when we flip this piece. We're actually going to pull it out and flip it back onto the piece of foam. Now the reason we're doing that is because obviously we've spent some time in making this casting table. If you were to not use a piece of foam or, and set the countertop directly on the casting mat, um, you could possibly damage your casting table. And if you do so, then you wouldn't be able to pour additional countertops on top of it and you'd have to start over. So what we're going to do is Jim and I are going to lean up against the edge of our casting table. We're actually going to pull the base material and the countertop a good portion of the way off. The next thing we're going to do is flip it up on the edge. Then we're going to slide it back towards us slightly. And then very gently we're going to set it back down on its back. At this point we'll grab the end of the base material. So now that we have the countertop flipped, you can see why we use the base material. What we were trying to achieve is this glass-like finish. Now, you don't want to touch the countertop. If I were to put my fingertips on the top of here right now, those blemishes would show forever. So what we're going to do is we're going to let it sit for a little while, and then we'll go ahead and come back. And either there's, there's several different things we could do. We could grind and polish this top, but due to the fact that we use the base material to create this glass-like finish, we're probably just going to go ahead and seal it and install it. In addition to the glass-like look on the top, don't forget we use the rails with the facing material on them. And we get a glass-like finish from these on the front as well. Again, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to touch them at this time because any type of, of uh, movement, contaminants, even fingerprints will show up at a later time. Now we're ready to strip this top as well. Again, it's been about two or three hours. Now I want you to pay attention to the way the back side of this top looks. Remember, we did this cast down because what we're going to do is come back and polish it. Normally you'll get a somewhat smooth appearance on the top. Sometimes you'll get a little bit of aggregate. But for the most part, this material is self-leveling. As we mentioned, you want to have a nice level casting table. As you notice also, you have several different colors in here. What we did when we poured this countertop is we used several bags of material. So when we use the separate bags, the, the several bags, we used a blend of Shadow Slate Color Pack and Charcoal. We used, in some of these, we used two of the Charcoal Color Packs and one Shadow Slate. And in some areas, you just see uh, two Shadow Slate or a single Shadow Slate and a single Charcoal. I want to point out a couple of things about this countertop. We chose on this countertop to polish it, so we poured straight on the melamine. As you notice, this is slightly more open surface. Uh, it doesn't have the glass-like sheen that you get with the base material. However, we're going to polish this top. And lastly, using our cut stone form liner out on the outside edge, we've given the look of a cut piece of stone for this top. In a little while, we'll be polishing it. As you notice also on this top, we added several different colors as I discussed earlier, and you can see that right in here. Okay, for a quick recap on what we did today with the flat out countertop system. Remember the flat out countertop system can be poured in a variety of different ways, such as these three tops that we did today. The flat out countertop system is a glass fiber reinforced mix design that is self consolidating and can be stripped in a controlled environment in two to three hours. Firstly, we poured this countertop on a base material and gives a glass-like appearance when poured face down and flipped up. In addition, we used the forming system with the rails that has the clear facing material that allows you to get a glass-like finish on the edges as well. So for this top, 
there's not much more to do. All we're going to do is go ahead and seal it. On this top over here, we didn't use any base material. We used the cut stone form liner as our front edge rail. So we're going to come back and polish this in a little while. We don't have to if we like this matte appearance. And for this top over here, we used another unique material called a reflective casting mat, which is a one-time use reflective casting mat. We actually put this down on the surface. We used the same types of rails and we just bent them. Now remember when we bent them we had the clear facing material on the outside edge and then what we did is we retaped the clear facing material on the inside edge to give us a glass like appearance on the front. The casting mat we poured straight down on it and when we stripped it you get all this look of this Italian glass reflective tile. And We also added several different colors meaning the distinct colors of charcoal and shadow slate and you can see the distinct differences. The thing to keep in mind with the flat out countertop mix system, it is, it is a system that sets in two to three hours in a controlled environment and there's many different ways you can use it. For instance, the flat out countertop system can be used with these sink molds and trays. Simply take the material, pour it inside, set this on top, put a drain knockout in here and then strip it the next day and you have yourself a sink. Or you could simply purchase a sink and use these knockouts inside your mold such as over here. We could have put this knockout or one of these knockouts in here, poured around it and then the next day you could insert your sink. There are also several other accessory items such as ashtrays, cigar trays, wine racks. So remember, there's endless possibilities with the flat out countertop system. With it being a self-consolidating mix, you can pour it face down over a special base material and get a glass-like appearance in two to three hours.